the Youth Guarantees Pathways and Profiles project, we've been doing this work for, for quite a long time and we see great value for the students when they're with us and when they immediately depart. We've always wondered what happens later on. What's the longer term impact of the work that we do and other providers around the country do under Youth Guarantee? And there's no way of measuring it, there's no measure. There's been no qualitative reports on the research done previously. And so we thought we'd have a go at finding out what happened to them later on down the track. I think the research was really about fundamentally what we do each and every day, which is we work with young people, mainly disengaged young people from mainstream environments, to achieve academically what they haven't achieved at school. And so providers like ourselves, YMCA, Community College, Salvation Army, we're all working in that second chance area and I was approached by Community College by Doug Reed to be part of a research project that would look at the longitudinal benefits of engaging with the YMCA type uh, providers. So uh, yeah, we're really excited to be part of that because I think we know each and every day within our, with our own settings that we make a significant difference. In saying that, I'm not sure that there has been a piece of research work that any of us can latch on to and really say this is the difference we're making. It was really exciting for us to do a project and to work alongside a team who were keen to really get good quality data and also to really enable youth voice to be heard. We know that it's really valuable to enable pathways for young people to become meaningfully employed, whatever those pathways may look like. And we also know that for young people where the, the traditional school system has not been well suited to their needs, we also know that those young people tend to do less well in terms of getting into meaningful employment longer term. And so there is a real need to be able to do something in that area, but there's also a real need to understand what happens in the process when something is put in place. How well does it work for these young people? I guess there's two things. One is um, improving our own practice. So if we understand better what, what the results of our work are, we can hone our work to be better and get the results more accurately or more quickly and work better for the young people. But also, well, we've been in the business a long time and with the change to youth guarantee, the focus was very much on purchasing qualifications. The government was buying qualifications. And we figured that wasn't the right thing for the young person. It was a part of it, but not the whole thing. So uh, doing the research, we were hoping to demonstrate that there were other things that were important, and then we could put the student voice into that conversation and say, these are things they found important, and we can put that back into our delivery and hopefully influence the policy makers as well at the same time. The overriding drive to do the project was to make sure we were meeting the needs of young people. Well, the project took the cohort of Youth Guarantee learners from three providers in 2015 and followed them through until the end of 2018. And the purpose of that was to see what happened, what was the result of the intervention, what was the result they got out of Youth Guarantee. Um, so that hadn't been done before. Um, we get immediate results, we don't know longer term ones. So the idea was to find out what did happen and what was the impact of the work that we and other providers did in 2015 that helped these guys in their later, later life. When we began this project we talked to Ako Aotearoa about funding a project and they were really interested in funding some research in this area and then we approached a bunch of education providers to find out who was able to take part and we ended up working with Community College, YMCA and Unitech and that gave us a good spread of education providers and students throughout New Zealand and then we worked with the Collaborative Trust to carry out the research. Once the data was collected from the first two surveys, that was analysed and written up into reports, feedback to our call, feedback to our participants, feedback to the institutions, and then for three years after that, there were the, the regular kind of catch-ups with those participants who agreed to be a part of the, the interview process. What was really interesting to us is when we began the project, we obviously framed it kind of on the Youth Guarantee Program. So we said, who are the learners that access this program? What are the short-term and long-term outcomes? And what's their perspective of Youth Guarantee? And as I was going along trying to analyse the data, I had those key research questions as my sort of headline for analysis. And I found it was really, really difficult to fit the young people's answers into those boxes. And I realised it's because we have based the research project on Youth Guarantee, which itself is assuming a linear transition and these young people aren't experiencing it that way. So I had to change the whole way 
I was analysing it and be led by what the young people were saying rather than by assumptions that were being made about how they transition. And also, on the quantitative side, we looked, we asked young people, we surveyed them, asked them about their school experience, their youth guarantee experience, their future plans and other situations in their lives, so income, employment, etc. And we also asked the providers about their education outcomes, whether or not they completed the program and looked at their literacy and numeracy scores. And when we went to analyse the data in terms of what helps young people do well, we found that all of that, the government collected data was really not that useful in helping us understand what worked for the young person. It was things that the young people had told us themselves about whether they had future plans and what sort of support they had access to. There were five key themes that came out of the research and these evolved over time as young people moved out of Youth Guarantee and into different areas of their lives which was mainly education and employment, for some people it was um, travel or parenthood. And the first theme was self-development, so that was about growth, about young people learning how to use their skills and how to be, I suppose, in different areas and different contexts, so in different work contexts and different education contexts. And it was also linked to identity development, so this was young people sort of trying to match who they were at the moment and where they wanted to go in the future and developing the skills and developing themselves in a way that they could achieve that. And the second theme was control, so this was about young people having control over themselves and their pathways, uh, so about being able to learn in a way they wanted, being able to do a job that they felt that they were getting value out of. Um, fit was the third theme that was about belonging and it was also about young people matching who they were at the moment and what they were doing at the moment with where they wanted to go. So if they were doing a job and that wasn't related to what they wanted to do in the future, they would leave that job and find something else that was more suited to the pathway that they wanted to follow. Uh, the fourth theme was support and networks. So this was about connections with people. So it could be family support, support from education providers, support from employers, support from friends. And having that ongoing support was a really, really important thing for young people. Those young people who had the best transition experiences tended to have a person or a family support or someone who was there for them throughout the whole time. And networks became more important as young people left Youth Guarantee. So whether it was a family network helping them decide where they wanted to go, whether it was an education or employment, or networks of employers or friends or just someone that would help them get a job. After Youth Guarantee, this was really how they mapped out their pathway, was through who they knew. The final theme was direction and stability. So this was about having a stable base. So it might be a stable base through support, it might be a stable base through having a job, it might be a stable base through having an idea of what they wanted to do and then they could build from that. And direction was just about that forward momentum. So they weren't just focusing on what they were doing now, they were thinking about that next step. They kind of showed me all these different ways how to study properly. I think that's one of the big reasons why, you know, I went to another course is just because I knew I'd be able to do it. Or I knew I'd be able to think of other ways how to do it if I couldn't do it. I can just see how big technology is going to get in the future and I think it's going to be good if there's like, if I have heaps of knowledge about that and it'll be easier to find a job. Um, I'm just working and just trying to look good, get more hours. Yeah, I'm comfortable where I'm at at the moment. I'm trying to get a painter's apprenticeship. There's always work for it because everything's got paint. I can always go further with it though and I can go to other industries with it. My old neighbour, he's pretty qualified, like he's got his own business and that, so I'll just talk to him and see if I can get anything through to him. When I um, first signed up for the Air Force, I got a message back the day after and it said, well, you need 18 credits, so I was like, alright, I'll do correspondence. The fact that transitions are iterative was really important um, and that is something that has been found in other research projects in New Zealand and throughout the world so it wasn't a surprise but what was interesting was the mismatch between how policy has approached youth guarantee so the policy obviously informs the structure of the program and it sees that it's a very linear thing so young people leave school they go to youth guarantee they get their qualification they move into further education or employment and what we saw for young people was that really was not the case it was so obvious what we found was just so much common sense the people wanted to fit they wanted to have control of what they were doing they wanted to be self-determining they wanted to grow up and you know that's just normal but it wasn't what the program is about. If kids get out of school in good nick, there's no requirement to have a, a reworking system post-school. So Youth Guarantee is really a picking up 
what the schools haven't been able to achieve. And that's not to do with what the schools can do, it's often to do with what the students' state of their life is. They had a lot of other things going on in their lives, um, so other transitions, leaving home, getting into relationships, learning to drive, that sort of thing. And also they didn't just go into employment and that was it. They had different jobs, they changed their minds about what they wanted to do. The same with education, maybe once they got into education that they realised it wasn't for them and changed pathways. So there was a lot of chopping and changing for young people. It wasn't just a straightforward pathway. The other key findings that we had were that, that transitions are non-linear, were that young people experience multiple transitions. Um, so Youth Guarantee was just one of the experiences that young people had throughout the time that we were interviewing them. For some people, for most of them actually, it was quite an important experience, but it wasn't the only thing that influenced their outcome. Transitions were context dependent and were very complex, so you kind of couldn't separate the things that were happening in young people's lives. So what was working for one young person at a particular point in time might not work for that same young person at a different point in time, and it might not work for a different young person in that same situation. Identity development was really important as well. So while young people were going through these transitions, they were also figuring out who they are and who they wanted to be and where they fit in the world. So a lot of their choices throughout their transitions were linked to identity development. And the other thing that was really important was that skills were the most important thing that young people took away from Youth Guarantee. So the qualifications were the hook that got them in because they did want to achieve and they wanted that qualification to show that they could do it, but looking at what they experienced throughout their transitions, it was the skills that helped them do well. So the people skills, communication, learning how to get along with other people, and then the technical skills that related to whatever job they were doing, so making coffee or IT skills and things like that. It's really important to understand that Youth Guarantee isn't just this other group of, of learners that for whatever reason didn't achieve at school. Within Youth Guarantee there are also different cohorts of learners and what I'm representing is a cohort of learner that is going to end up on a benefit for life or in prison for life or in a marginalised group within our community for life unless providers the likes of us step up and support them to reach their full potential and give them the same self-belief and confidence that they also can achieve and be contributing citizens. And I think that's one of the things that policymakers need to think about is that Youth Guarantee funding doesn't necessarily look the same if it's delivered at my local polytechnic as it does being delivered alongside a YMCA or a community college. The cohort of learner is significantly different with significantly different barriers to learning. And that might be academic, it might be economic, it might be family background, far now, family, whatever that might be, those young people have the potential to achieve if the right resources are put alongside them to achieve. And, and YMCA and Community College are, are living proof of being able to get those young people to academically achieve. Our mainstream environment told those young people they would never achieve. And that is not okay in a country that believes in equal opportunity. And I think Youth Guarantee in our cohort of learner really gives those young people hope and uh, I don't know what value you put on hope but I can tell you that at this point in time the money being invested in that cohort of learner is insufficient to reap hope. The world that these guys are entering, I don't, I, it's a whole different world than the world I entered and the fact they haven't come out of school with qualifications doesn't degrade their possibilities at all, I don't think, and they've got as much potential as anyone else. And with the world of work changing so much, these guys have just got to get into it. So the best we can do is understand what their perspective is and try and work with that, because I don't know how it's going to be for them. And I, I just don't, I mean, jobs are coming and going all the time. I think giving these guys an opportunity to, to study, to be in a stable environment, to make some peer connections, come up with a qualification so they can see themselves with the future is really, really helpful. Uh, and this research says that that is helpful and there's a bit more to it as well. Transitions aren't predictable or linear, these young people. Uh, the idea that they can come into a program, get a qualification, NCA level two, and then they're okay, is just not right. There's a whole lot more to it than that. 
uh, and it's about the individual, it's about their, their circumstances and about what they meet when they go out into the world there. So um, having such a narrow focus program is really not, not the answer. If we get the policy makers to look more deeply into this research, that might inform the way they structure future policy around these youth interventions. That'd be ideal. It's quite hard to get to those guys and to convince them of things, and partly it's because the structure they work within. They've got accountabilities and responsibility for expenditure and that kind of thing, and limited resources. But I, I really think that the Youth Guarantee could do a whole lot more if it was better directed. I think these programs are really important for young people. I just think that they do need to be a bit broader in terms of the amount of young people they reach and also what they measure. I mean, it's fine to measure qualifications, obviously that is an important thing. And from an accountability perspective, you do need to know whether or not people are completing the course and what they're getting out of it. But there is a lot more going on for young people. It's about distance traveled. So it's about the person they were when they started and the person they were when they finished. And it's about what they personally got out of it whether it's um, learning how to have better relationships, um, learning how to be more confident, have more respect for themselves, um, learning I guess, self-control, so being able to take responsibility for themselves, all of those are the things that are going to help them do well in the future. And if they have a qualification as well, that's a bonus. So what I really want to see out of it is that young people are able to succeed in their terms. This has been a really valuable project to be a part of for many reasons. I think the project as a whole is a really good illustration of a collaboration between a group of researchers and a group of youth guarantee providers. And what it is an illustration of is the desire for both groups to really understand and enhance practice. And I think that that's something to be learnt from as well in terms of bringing, bringing together those sets of expertise to really allow a voice to be heard. But it's also just been an amazing project for me, me personally, and for us as an organisation to learn more about youth guarantees and the value of it. Hearing the voices of young people and hearing their experiences from, from a grassroots level about what works for them, what we're doing well and how we could do better. And that is that's gold, you know, that information is gold from young people themselves. That's, that's what we need to hear and that's what we need to respond to. They know what works for them and we need to be able to work alongside that.